Day Dawn's Arcs. Welcome everyone to your weekly Fantasy Star Online 2 podcast recorded live on November 29th, 2020. I am one of your hosts, Prince Brightstar, and with me is Zance. Go ahead and say hello. Hello, hello, hello. How's it going, everyone? Uh, I'm doing like... well, Lord Samuel. Thank you <laughs> yes, for joining. <laughs> We've already got people in chat today here. <laughs> so, we had uh, the final patch of Episode 5 released here on the uh, global servers, which is, uh, what can I say? I can't wait for Episode 6 to hit us now here. Mm-hmm. Finally catching up. Oh, boy. Yep. And it's been kind of a, kind of a busy week. I mean, uh, first, mm-hmm. of course, I'm going to take uh, credit here uh, for uh, calling December 9th as when Episode 6 is yep. going to release. <laughs> Honestly, it was pretty obvious because that's when the uh, lobby, the Thanksgiving lobby ends, and that's probably when the Christmas lobby is going to happen. Agreed. But I, th- I think the thing that nobody uh, expected to happen was that uh, was that this uh, this time the mission pass was only going to last two weeks. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to be talking about that because it's a bit interesting. Yep, definitely. Because yeah, it ends whenever. Uh, Episode five or episode six starts. Yep. Uh, what have you been up to uh, since uh, since the last patch here? Um, mostly playing Yakuza like a dragon. I, I got that as a gift from my friend, and I've been playing that. <laughs> I remember you mentioning that last week as well. I think. Hmm. Yep. I've just been playing more of it. <laughs> gotcha. I had kind of a kind of a fun week here. Um grinding out everything I needed to get ready for episode 6. I've got my Trailblazer uh, sword all set to go, 8 slot, Uh, plus uh, I've got a, um, I got a leg Starquake unit put together um, with um, plus 175 attack on it, so that's, uh, that's a nice little thing because you can then the Starquakes um, come with a built-in 50 as well, so that brings it up to 225. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the other thing I was um, involved with here, um, just last night, uh, Amicitia, Sword Logic, Fourth Floor, and Passion uh, put on their November fashion show, uh, and I was the winner of their uh, of their uh, their Fell Spawn and Fell Worms uh, category. It was a category sort of derivative of uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, congrats! Thank you. Yeah, you, uh, you showed me the video of it. It looked really cool, the way you did that transition into another outfit. It was technically the same outfit. I just put on a bunch of accessories and units at the same time. <laughs> nice. But yeah, uh, it, it came down to the wire on that one. It was like a four-way tie at the end. So, But yeah, it was a fun time overall, so I might try that again uh, whenever they put out another one. I might try it as well. I have plenty of outfits, so I could try something. Well, if you do, uh, best of luck to you. All right, thank you. Uh, And uh, Lord Samuel, uh, let's see. Uh, No, I I haven't seen the the uh, the augments just yet. I'll have to take a look at that after the show here. Um, But let's go ahead and move on to uh, to our topics for today here. Uh, starting with uh, what we've got uh, related to uh, the Malevolent Void. So. Yes, this is Persona the Mask. Indeed. Basically, like, he has the different masks which indicate which of the four different versions that he's copied. So far, the only ones I've gotten are the Hunar and Angel from the ones that I've done. Well, keep looking because apprentice mask is best mask. Yes, it is. <laughs> if if you don't know what's going on with that, um, apprentice gives you plus forty attack um, mm-hmm. on all augments, uh, and then or, or rather for for all attack categories, combine that with persona reverie, and that gives you eighty just to start with. And then you can go like uh, might or precision or, or whatever uh, you need to plus uh, plus another um, an augment. Um, add in um, and potentially something like doom break or a lesser category things like that uh, and that gets you pretty darn close to 200 if you're trying to put together uh, one of those um, one of those trailblazer weapons and uh, get the uh, get the five percent bonus off of that 
yeah, having those kind of augments on a weapon is really good. Yep. But yeah, you also got the Trailblazer units that you could possibly get. Yep. Those and are uh, hard to get. And even even once you're done putting together your weapon and your units, you know, don't stop collecting those stones, because there might be a little upgrade coming in Episode 6 that we know about. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Don't, don't, don't stop collecting those stones. Yeah. Uh, the sh I believe it's the Chevelle units. Right. It, uh, so, so no. There, there's a, there is a, there's an upgrade to the, to the Trailblazer units as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, from the Trailblazer and, one. Yeah, and that'll activate uh, S6, S7, and S8, uh, mm. S class uh, or S rank abilities. Uh, but yeah, so uh, he's back and not quite how you remember <laughs> him. Uh, Persona of the Mast has appeared in an unexpected location and in an unexpected form. Unfortunately, whatever he has, he's up to has caused a split in the universe that has allowed it to force its way out of the Altered Dimension. This void is also expanding rapidly. Fleet Oracle would like to stay right where it is and not get vacuumed into oblivion, so it's up to you to plug that malevolent void. Uh, though, he ha though he was thought to be destroyed, Persona apparently yet persists, as Ark's intelligence has picked up readings of Persona of the Mast coming from an area of altered space. The entity is believed to be contentious and quite dangerous, as it has taken to alternately wearing the mask of the other Dark Falls, Elder the Gargantuan, Luther the Fallen, Apprentice the Vernal, and Gemini the Duplicate. This behavior gives it the additional abilities of the other Dark Falls, depending on the mask currently worn, making its attacks far more devastating. Insightful operatives will note that these masks can serve as a point of attack, and targeting them will most likely have an effect on the overall strength of Dark Falls persona. Be cautious though, as one significant damage uh, once a significant damage has been dealt, it may react like a cornered and wounded animal, potentially revealing its true form. It is believed that its goal is the absorption of the entire universe. Therefore, the lives of millions are at stake. Be on your guard, operatives. So yeah, how this fight works is, if you already haven't done it, there are two different masks it goes between, and after you defeat each one of those forms, then it'll go into its true form, which will have a one singular weak, like, big weak spot right at its chest. Yep. Yep, so basically, uh, go ahead and uh, kill his heart. But yeah, every form has uh, specific weak points on the uh, extra things that it adds in. For the Elder, it's the big giant arms. For, I believe, a print, uh, for, is it Angel, I think? Um, Angel oh, yeah, has the uh, uh, has the arm glaives. Yeah, Apprentice. For, uh, for Apprentice, it's the arm glaives. For Luther, it's like the big, um, uh, what would you call it? It's the so, things that are around him that have weak spots on it. So, so I, let me clear cut. It's mm -hmm. it's actually Luther that has the arm blades, and then Apprentice has the the four wings. Okay. And then uh, uh, Gemini has the four orbs floating around in four corners. Mm -hmm. And Gemini is the most annoying one. <laughs> yep. You you kind of have to wait until he flips over if you're a melee class. Yeah. But yeah, yeah got... there are some 15 star weapons that drop from this, the Ophistia series. Yep. Now those are the same ones that you've been able to get uh, from uh, uh, during the uh, during the uh, the four weapon trades uh, between mm -hmm. um, uh, the Ares, the Raven, uh, and the uh, and the other two weapons in that series. Um, or you can, so, yeah, because you can either build up to that or just be extremely lucky and get it as a drop. Exactly. And then, of course, since uh, Persona has so many masks, he also has so many different uh, augments available here. Uh, aside from the reveries that you see here, you can also get the souls of the different Dark Falls as well. Mm -hmm. um, and the reveries, uh, I believe, if you have all five of them together... Combined together with, um, what was it, the Omega Catalyst, I think? 
to... I, think, I don't remember. Exactly. I'm, I'm trying to remember. There, there's a way to combine all five of them together uh, into a single reverie. Yeah, so basically so you won't have the uh, minus uh, attack stats in the Gemini one. Yep. Yeah, it's... Uh... If you're up for it, you can uh, definitely go for it. It's uh, mm -hmm. not a bad thing to go for. But I'll also mention, given that we are this close to Episode 6, there's going to be other stuff coming fairly soon that's going to make this not so relevant until kind of the end of Episode 6. Um, yeah. Unless, you, but unless you're... Starting off, but like starting off on Episode 6, having Persona and Elder Reveille is really good. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you're trying to go for the, the Trailblazer... Uh, S1 ability, uh, which uh, at 200 attack power on the weapon does give you a boost of 5% uh, extra damage. Instead, if you're only at like 180, uh, you would get uh, just the 3% power boost. And of course, yeah, we I do mean... have some uh, some profound uh, weapons as well as Starquake uh, weapons dropping here uh, from this quest. And even the Trailblazer uh, units here. Which, again, good luck on getting those. <laughs> yep. But also, we got the four-player limited one. Indeed, the refight. Yes, the Call of the Void. Yep. So, uh, this one requires uh, level 85 main and subclasses. Uh, but if you're hero, then it's just 85. Indeed. And it can only be accessed from a quest trigger that drops from the Malevolent Void. Mm-hmm. Last I saw, I think those, uh, if uh, we're being sold on the shop, uh, we're selling for about seven million or so. Yeah. Because these give the, like, have a higher chance of the better drops. They also give you uh, two times as many uh, Erebos stones I found. Mm-hmm. And the big things that can drop from these, look, not only do you have those four different weapon camos that are showing there, but you also have the Founder's Amphorite and the Kronos Eterna Stone. Which again, those are extremely rare to even drop, so if one drops for you, consider yourself extremely lucky. You should probably play the lottery. Yeah. Is it me, or do those camos look like they belong on the uh, Etoile? Um, kinda, especially with how light they are. Yeah. I guess it's we'll a see soon yellow. enough. But yeah, the Kronos Eternal Stone is needed for up uh, for getting the uh, Val series upgraded to the Atlas, and the Founders and Friday is needed for upgrading the Xeon uh, series weapons. Yep. Of course, we had a bunch of other stuff that came with uh, this week's uh, patch, so let's take a look at uh, all that here. Uh, we have the uh, uh, we have a new AC and Fun Scratch ticket uh, for Corrupted Heroes. We also have the AC Scratch Ticket Support Items Pack. Uh, there's yeah, new good. Fresh Finds offerings. Uh, new Mission Pass Season 10. Uh, the Campaign Function Quest Link Boost is active. Along with the Limited Time Permanent, que uh, permanent Quest, Dark Reverly Consumes Light. Uh, along with a Trigger version of that as well. Uh, as for in-game campaigns, we got a Free Malevolent Void and Dark Reverly. Uh, trigger campaign, uh, rewards for enhancement campaign, and the urgent quest boost campaign. Uh, now that uh, seems yeah, the to urgent quest boost campaign doesn't start until the fifth. Yep. And then we have the road to episode six campaign. So everything we talked about last week: uh, the get fifteen mm -hmm. star weapon, the get twelve star units, login rewards campaign for both weeks. Uh, or actually, no, uh, there's one starting uh, December 8th, it looks like. Which is um, when Episode 5, or Episode 6 launches. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. There's also the Quest Link Boost campaign, the Welcome Back Arcs campaign, the PSO2 Global Social Media Salute campaign, the Enhancement campaign, and Get More Rising Weapon Badge 4 campaign. Yep, and the Enhancement campaign's the best one to take advantage of. Get your stuff grinded up to 35 now. Yep. And hold on to them, and then sell them later. <laughs> yep. I'm surprised that we didn't get a plus 15% on the augments, though. Yeah, it's interesting. 
because it uh, usually on the JP side, whenever they have the enhancement campaign, they also have the augment campaign as well. Yeah. Which is higher chance of successful augments. I don't know what's going on here. It, it's like for some reason they're not letting us participate in the web linked events that the Japanese mm -hmm. side has, whereby we collect points um, globally towards a, towards a goal, and as uh, we overcome different uh, different tiers of the of the campaign, that um, we then unlock additional rewards and things like that. It's really weird that we're not being allowed to participate in those. Yeah, I would like that they add them later, but we're so we're getting closer and closer to New Genesis that it seems kind of pointless to add in. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a we're definitely gonna have a, a word about that a little bit here. Mm -hmm. um, but let's move on to. Uh, Let's see, uh, they do have the new Urgent Quest schedule, including the Malevolent Void and the Call of the Void. Interesting. So the Call of the Void, they're saying, is actually supposed to be in the schedule? Yeah, it's supposed to be. But well, well, it's only accessible through triggers. Yeah, let's... We'll get to that in a, in a moment. I, I do have mm -hmm. that pulled up, so we'll be able to verify that. Um... We also have some uh, miscellaneous stuff here. Fixed an issue in which the uh, the incorrect reset time is displayed for the survey remnants of a parallel world or ultimate quest. Uh, okay, that's trigger... good. Yep. Yeah, that was causing confusion. Yeah, that was, because I was able to get uh, up to death 19 that one day. <laughs> yep. Yep, and now that I got my trailblazer uh, together, I'm going to look to see if I can push myself beyond death 100 now. All right. Good luck. Thanks. Yeah, because uh, the uh, the fifteen star boost that you get through uh, death one through one hundred is no longer applied. It for the trailblazer, it does apply up to stage one hundred eleven. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, we've also got uh, trigger quest balance adjustments uh, regarding an issue found with uh, the trigger elder of the unfoundable abyss. You can start using triggers. This quest was temporarily suspended due to an issue with the balance of Masetta rewarded, but it has now been reopened after the balance adjustments. And so yeah, that was giving about a hundred thousand Masetta per normal run. Yep. Yeah, that's a bit much there. Yeah, it was causing really bad inflation. Uh, so uh, three tri boosts plus a hundred percent were distributed to everyone as an apology. Uh, and then there was also compensation given over the incorrect emotes shown uh, in the scratch ticket Blazing Beats. Uh, so for that one, uh, 100 Star Gem ticket has, dis uh, has been distributed to everyone after the November 24th schedule of maintenance. And then three scratch tickets uh, will be distributed at a later date to those who played the scratch ticket and acquired the emote in question. And the emote incorrectly showcased in the video will be distributed to all players at a later date as compensation. Oh, all players? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so that's that's a decent uh, decent compensation there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I don't do the AC scratch, so just getting a free email from that. All right, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. I didn't do anything, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on now to um, the AC scratches in uh, in question here, uh, or not not in question, but what was released this week here. Mm -hmm. So we got uh, the support items pack this time again. Basically, these are just items to help you with either changing the element of the weapon that you currently have, doing great enhancements, or um, doing better in augments. Yep, and also, and there are augments that are gained through this as well. The indeed. grand, like the the biggest one being the grand ones. Yep, the grand are your final uh, ones that are going to be distributed in this method here. So no mm -hmm. no need to hold back anymore. Grand is the last tier. So yeah, if you're going for a melee augment or a melee weapon, having the the Falls uh, Reveries, along with the Grand Might, it's perfect. That's just even more melee attack. Yep. Yeah, I ran through. Uh, I ran through this uh, scratch a decent number of times here. Um, so uh, I picked up a couple of the uh, of the Grand uh, um, uh, Precisions actually, 
Uh, I also got a couple of the uh, the augment insurance uh, at uh, max oh, seven yeah. slots. The augment insurance is really good, especially if you just want to get up to seven slots. Getting yep. up to eight slots is the better option, but if you don't want to risk it, using these insurances so you just get up to seven is good enough. Yeah, and the fact that uh, we haven't had any of the titles released yet that uh, that really uh, that give you like the fifty or the sixty percent augment increase uh, mm -hmm. chance that's that's uh, that's that's definitely going to help uh, with that. Um, but once that 60% comes out, well, what can I say? Um, people want to hang on to that until the next boost week, because at that point, then it's pretty much a guarantee that you're going to, uh, have success at that point. Yeah. But you can only do it for one of them. Yep. Which, yeah, I would save that for whenever you're upsliding to eight. Yep. Wait for the crest units. Yes. <laughs> Wait for the thirteen star units, just in general. Yeah, or the thirteen, uh, the fifteen star weapons, but the the Crest mm -hmm. series is the final weapon series, or at least the last one that was released in the Japanese servers as of right now. Yep. And you also get some uh, bonus rewards with this here. Um, once you hit uh, number twenty, uh, or the the twentieth draw rather, um, you get an uh, you do get some augment transfer passes. Uh, and then at 30, you get the Augment Mark Succession Transfer Pass. What is that? So that allows you to move one of the marks as part of uh, as part of doing an affix. The marks? I so like don't Mark Joy, the Mark, uh, uh, Mark Karanga, and things like that. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah. Yeah, you, it, can, you can see how much I do augmenting, which is barely much. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a top tier sort of thing. But at the same point, um, Sega ha has given players, at least with the current campaigns going on, some decent augments, but they're not going to carry you to end game in uh, episode mm -hmm. six. For that, you're going to need something better. That's for certain. Yeah, episode six is where the power creep really just hits hard. Yep. By the way, I would recommend uh, that some players, uh, they might want to grab one of these element transition darks at this point, because mm -hmm. that's what one of the enemy types in uh, in Episode 6 is going to be weak to. Oh yeah, I'll be grabbing that. Making sure that all my weapons are dark elements. Sounds good. Alright, let's move on here to the other AC Scratch that was released here, that being Corrupted Heroes. Starting off, we got the Broken Stick here. Hair looks like candy. Yep. <laughs> and the outfit itself looks, I don't know, kind of punkish. Actually, I guess the whole set kind of looks punkish. Yeah, the, whole, the whole set is punkish. I guess Sega's trying to get a get an early jump on some of the other releases coming uh, in December. <laughs> the Zui Oscurita. Yep. But yeah, it's very either punkish or goth like. Yeah. This and one does. Then that and then that one is just edgy. Look at all the edges on it. <laughs> edgy, but also has some. I don't know, kind of insect-like theme there. Hmm. The um, Escarido, or yep. however you pronounced it. Oh, we got some butterfly wings. Yep. There's an alien mask if you want one. Hmm. And the table dance. You just sit in a chair doing random moves on a table. <laughs> okay. Yep. We got Dance 56, Mail's just spinning around. And yep. the one they didn't, and they actually didn't show two of them, uh, Weapon Enhancement Magic and Rod Pose. So we also got Rod Pose. Yep. Nice. Yep, again, uh, looking at the uh, Escaradale. 
Yep, the edgy edge. Yep. And the punk outfit. The broken uh, gift song. Okay, and the, the Zooey... Uh, uh, and uh, the inner wear. Yeah, the <laughs> Zooey uh, Oscaritia. I... What? <laughs> I mean, okay, it, we're finally getting close to the to the smart innerware that the Japanese server had, but this is this is still a little bit off of that. Wait, do we still not have the smart innerware? Stuff? I don't think so. Hopefully, they add it with episode six. That would be nice. Yeah, because regardless of that, most of the male innerwares you never see because the outerwear just cover everything. Pretty much, yeah. You can only see it in the um, in the um, in the uh... The uh, the I can't remember what it's called in game right now, but it's the it's the um, the salon. Yeah, the salon. Thank you. Mm. Um, yeah, the, if you click on the if you click on the camera button a couple of times there, uh, there's uh, there's a way to uh, take off the outerwear and the uh, the base wear, so you just see the innerwear. Yeah, but that's the only way that you're able to see the innerwear in game. Pretty much, unless you do an unofficial mod. Yeah, uh, expert the expert matching in global. That's another thing that's just completely up in the air. Yeah, I'm hoping that they're going to release that trigger once um, once episode six launches, but we'll have to see. It's it's definitely mm -hmm. time for it uh, now that uh, now that we do have players going up against Persona, and some players are, uh, but not all of them, which is actually really surprising. Not all randoms I've met up with have failed the two orbs. I've only failed it once, and that's it. Yeah, it's... If anything, the, the Western player base is a lot better than the Japanese players were, or at least the power creep is helping them out here. Oh, yeah, definitely. That, uh, that was especially apparent when it came to most of the Episode 4 stuff. Yeah, but up until then, we thought that was just because the Nemesis and Raven series had come out way too early. I think it was a combination of both. Just in general, global players were just a bit better along with the better power creep. I guess we'll see how New Genesis turns out then if mm -hmm. um, if they're going to end up taking down raid bosses before the Japanese players do then. I'm guessing that when it comes to New Genesis, that's probably going to be like everyone is going to be on the same servers. That's the hope, but we'll have to mm -hmm. see. Yeah, I would much prefer that instead of be having another separation of global and Japanese players. Yeah. Of course, everyone's going to have their own niche together. Yeah. I just, I, I much prefer everyone being able to play together regardless of what language they speak. Agreed. Uh... Going back to the AC scratch here, we do have the uh, the Dracul's uh, color variant series here, as well as the uh, uh, the Dralia series as well, uh, getting a color variant, um, and then a bunch of new hairstyles here, uh, including glow in the dark eyes. <laughs> That's Ralphie just hair. the light blue eyes, the the, the glow in the dark ones. Oh yeah. That's all it is. It's just really bright light blue and then oh, we, you, go ahead we, and we got some uh, the Gesang mesh and the stack mesh yep some horns coming off of this here mm -hmm. the uh, Escaradio mask Looks like there's also a color variant of that here as well. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and, and Krimid, that is exactly the case. Like, if you know about on JP before Global ever was a thing, Ship 2 was the English server. Like, the English ship. Yep. That's where most of the English players were, and especially, specifically on Block 7. Block 7, and then there were, uh, there were some other blocks that were... Um, before that, I think I think they took over. What was it? Block twenty at one point. Maybe. 
but it was mostly block seven that was the big one for English speakers. But ship four was the most po was the more popular one. Yeah, ship ship four is sort of what was it? I, I think that that was considered the the more elite of the Japanese players ended up there. Yeah. So ship four was the more popular for the Japanese players, while ship two was the English players. Yep. Uh, also got some floating knives here as an accessory. And wireframe butterflies. Along with some wings. That's the butterfly wings. Once again, the alien mask. <laughs> and we also have uh, evolution device, Cancer R. Yep. Is that a mag from PSO? I don't think so. That, mm. that doesn't sound familiar. No. But yeah, there are um, the enhancements. There are the melee PP2, which is garbage. Yeah, the, these need to be upgraded at this point. Mm -hmm. Come on, Sega. No, okay. And also there are four emotes. Uh, the ones that were shown was Table Dance and Dance 56, but there's also Weapon Enhancement Magic and Broad Pose. Yep. And then we have and... some bonus rewards here. Uh, shoulder Arm uh, left and right at 15 and 20 scratches respectively here. And also an emote, Dangle. I don't know why they decided not to show that emote, but all right. I'm not sure either. Hmm. And we also have a new fun scratch active as well here. Yay, fun! So, a bunch of hair as typical with uh, all these. Um, mm -hmm. Looks like, uh, what, the off centered wing? It's a nice uh, hairstyle. Yep. Uh, I, I also got panda some. Panda makeup. <laughs> it's just upslap <laughs> uh, fodder, yep. <laughs> yeah. uh, socks and gloves female set uh, got a and bunch no. of berets and here uh, berets yep the mirrored shades okay alright I need to get that I need the mirrored shades that looks cool yeah that, that looks like it's perfect for setting up like a superhero costume or something like that <laughs> Get the handcuffs. Oh, oh, fun. And some different colored hair clips and the flank cannons. Yep. And then, from what I can tell, the rest of it is, is from last time. Pretty much, yeah. I, I think uh, I, I think the Bito Donuts were uh, were new, but the rest yeah, is, were, yeah. No, the Bito Donuts were this, from last, I believe. All right. Uh, we're doing in the weapon or the furnishing is the elegance series. Yep. We also got some two music discs, uh, PSO2 event, Relax J and the cafe area Tundra. Which is interesting because I don't think mm -hmm. we have that cafe yet. Yeah, we're going to be getting that cafe with the Christmas lobby. Yep. And two emotes, cheer on two and squats. I think we had squats last time, so yeah. cheer on two is the new one. Uh, also got uh, remodeling items for Daybreak Province, as well as an elegant theme. I really haven't messed with my uh, um, my personal quarters in a while. I really should. And yes, the Christmas Urgent Quest is one of the best ones. Yep, Christmas on Ice. Yes. I still prefer the Halloween one because of the song, but the Christmas one is honestly the better one in terms of uh, just general fun. Uh, Krimid, keep in mind, we're probably getting the uh, the 2018 version of uh, Christmas on Ice here. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have episode six. That's true. So we might get the latest one. It's We'll have to see how they play it out. Yeah. Maybe it'll be 2019. Maybe. Or we'll get the latest one. I don't know. We'll see. 
if we get the latest one, we're getting it earlier than uh, than uh, than uh, than the Japanese server. Which would be pretty cool. <laughs> that would be that would be crazy. Although they just did mm -hmm. that, they just did that for the Thanksgiving one. Yeah, they did. I All still right. find it funny how we how both got a Thanksgiving lobby, even though it's Thanksgiving is just an American holiday. <laughs> well, we we know that the players over there said that that it was cool seeing the uh, the Independence Day lobby, so okay. uh, that's that's kind of what prompted uh, them to bring over the Thanksgiving one, and I guess they'll see the Independence Day lobby uh, next year, <laughs> uh, depending upon who's still over on uh, PSO2 versus the New Genesis side. Yeah, because yeah. The, uh... I do know some Japanese people who are very fascinated on English and American culture. So I guess that would make it pretty cool for people who just play the Japanese version to have those kind of things. Yep. Plus, they, I guess there's always the feeling that they might be missing out on something. Yeah, and also that. <laughs> Alright, we also have an update oh, to yeah, the fresh... New Genesis might be all everyone having the same kind of events which means we would have the the Japanese New Year event in the US and the global one which would have the shrine which is something that is only a Japanese thing yep and Rook's really good point there that was confirmed in uh, mm -hmm. one of their uh, one of their investor meetings the global side is doing better uh, in terms of making money than the Japanese side is so they might be putting more effort on us now here. Wow, it's making more money? Man, maybe they should have thought about that and not wait eight years on bringing this over. Uh, they, it was a very different cultural time for them. Unfortunately, back in 2012, they didn't think it was going to work. So, Oh, yeah, because of how terribly they treated uh, Universe Global. Yeah. So Yeah, Sega, was, the Sega themselves were shocked by how well this got. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had a cash cow waiting, and they had no idea. Yep. All right, let's take a look at the new fresh find shop here. Uh, so we got the uh, clashing uh, Calciaria, uh box set here. So it's going to be uh, a bunch of stuff for uh, female casts here, mm -hmm. uh, including uh, Tiara and uh, some uh, rear blades here, as well as the thruster. Yeah. It's not just female cast, it's all female races. Oh, good point. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. right. It just looks cast in theme. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. And we all... We're getting the uh, Christmas thing early here. The sunny snowfall. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And the uh, sagacious waistcoat. A nice fur lining in there, I guess. Yep. And the triggers that will be here. The Iron and Salt Trigger, Malevolent Void, Maker of New Epochs, Phantasm Matriarch, and Christmas on Ice. Yep. Hmm. Oh, Christmas looks like ice. we're got, getting the Christmas on Ice stuff uh, probably on the 8th. Mm, well, this one actually goes until the 23rd, so... Yeah, this goes until 23rd. So we're probably getting that trigger added onto available in the Fresh Find Shop on the 8th, more than likely. The 8th or the 9th, depending upon when, when you call your maintenance, I guess. Oh, yeah. Because maintenance wouldn't happen until very late on the 8th, so it would be the 9th then. Yep. Alright. Let's take a look at the new Season Pass that we have here. Season number 10. Or uh, Mission Pass, is, rather. Yeah. Mission Pass in Season 10 and this is very condensed. You only yep. have two weeks to get four weeks of items. Now, that would be a problem if they kept the original uh, kind of uh, reward, like the rewards for completing the mission pass missions. However, they added 10 to all of them. So instead of eight for completing one of them, you would get 18. Yeah, it was, it was the fact that season passes up until now had been four weeks uh, each. Uh, that was throwing other people off in terms of saying, okay, episode 6 is coming on the 23rd. No, mm -hmm. I called the 9th, and I guessed correctly that they were condensing this one. So, that's, that's what happened here. 
Uh, why don't you take us through this here? Alrighty. So we got uh, season ten here. Um, there's currently a lot to do in Fleet Oracle between. Oh yeah, this is just the tier mission stuff that I was talking about. Oh, and by the way, season ten of the Mission Pass will begin on November 25th. They already started. Season 10 of the Mission Pass will feature uh, Void Arabite Fragments. These materials are very hard to come by, so make sure you get all of the Void Arabite Fragments that you can. There's also a special mission. This is also a special Mission Pass, as you'll get four weeks worth of items in only two weeks. So yeah, these Void Arabite Fragments, these are the ones that you get from doing the uh, Persona the Mask uh, Urgent Quest. But you can also get some of them through here as well. Yep. And... Um, so, when it comes to the normal tier rewards, you got the weapon camo zodiac signs. It looks like it's a wired lancer, maybe, or twin daggers or something. It's yeah, it kind of looks wired lance-ish, I guess. Uh, we got the Lillipin waddle race, uh, so you can add that alongside your Rappy waddle race. Yep. <laughs> and the enemy two emote, which um, I don't remember what the male one looks like, but the female one is now whenever he's really angry <laughs> yep uh for the gold tier rewards is all the different outfits we got night vision goggles hello the sam fisher eternal, yep the eternal form set for female cast uh, your hair in the shape of a guitar yeah what um, is that? that that's like that's even crazier than 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 What's his name for Final Fantasy X? Uh, Waka, uh, Waka I Not think? Waka, the, uh, the, uh, the main villain. Oh, oh, shoot, I forget his name. Uh, Jet. Not yeah, it's Jet. Crazy that it's not, not Jet? Um, yeah, the, oh, the... Oh, uh, yes, um, I know what person you're talking about. I forget his name. Yeah, shoot. it's been so long. <laughs> ah, it's been so long since I've played Final Fantasy X. Hold on. Yeah, this is this is gonna kill me too here. I need to know what what his name was. Uh, Seymour. Seymour, that's it. Seymour. So yeah, this yeah, is... and his uh, like edgy hair. <laughs> yeah, this is even crazier than that. Yeah, it's crazier than the grotto hair. <laughs> Uh, we uh, also got the... the Twin Saber Soaring Blade. Oh, okay. Um, we also got the um, Esplendus Color outfit, which, by the way, this is the outfit for the original Doomans in uh, Infinity. Yep. Fantasy Star Portable 2 Infinity. Mm hmm. Because you also got the um, Esplendus Semi Medium and the Eye. Because the way that the Doomans were in infinity is one of their eyes was covered up by some kind of patch yep and it's not just only the uh the doomans uh, getting in on the fun here you've also got the mm -hmm. uh the cast set from that game as well the justice armor yep and also the eternal form is from infinity as well so all of these outfits were originally from portable 2 infinity yep Coincidence, coincidence. Yeah, we were we were thinking during the pre-show that that, that, that uh, Sega might have been watching out for when that English translation was finally going to come out and just release all these all at the same time. Mm. Uh, I find the, it uh, more of a coincidence, but it's still pretty funny. Yep. Even the uh, Flora Victoria outfits, uh, that's going to be for your female Doomans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I can finally have a proper male Dooman. <laughs> yep. And the Emperor Rappy Mantle is here as well. Also got some uh, weapon camos here. That nicer than the Nintendo. Oh, yes, definitely. We got the Heavenly Insight. Weapon camo, which is for bows. Mm -hmm. And the Valiant. It, okay, that's probably Wired Lance. Uh, I think that's actually... Or something. Or yeah, that's, that, that's actually uh, Talus. Oh, that's Talus. Oh, yeah, okay. 
when you open it up, it uh, it looks like a, a glowing orb. Oh, okay. Ooh, I could use that. <laughs> and then, of course, there's also a second uh, cast set here. The uh, the the filth. I think that is how you call that. Or file yeah, filth. Yeah, filth. I would say. It's very skinny. Yeah. And Man. also, Grizz! You can dress your female guys as a bear. Yep. That's adorable. Although, I think that's also one of the characters from fa uh, from the um, Fantasy Star Online to the animation, if I remember correctly. Maybe. And that might be the same thing with the filth. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've watched that. Yeah, same here. And on tier 3, 9, 15, 19, 25, and 30, you'll get Void Air Right Fragments. Yep. So you'll get these alongside the ones that you'll get from Persona of the Mass. Indeed. These aren't going to give you enough for a whole weapon, so mm -hmm. keep collecting. Yep. 80 in total, yeah. And I believe you need 100 for the weapon. Well, it's it's uh, it's think, 150 right? actually, um, uh, along yeah. with along with uh, grabbing the um, the profound weapon and the four other weapons you need to smash together. Yep. So yeah, it requires a lot more than just the 80 that you get from this pass. But yeah, you only have um, until the eighth to finish this. So good luck. But yeah, with the um, how they doubled the rewards, it's going to be a lot easier to finish this this time around. But yeah, we oh got yeah, our urgent quest and concerts, and we actually do have concerts this time. Indeed. So uh, we do have a Cosmic Twinkle Star going on today. Tomorrow is going to be Eternal Encore as well as for two. Or no, actually, that's uh, that's further in. Let me let me back mm -hmm. this up here. Um, for today, um, actually. Yeah, there was a concert early this morning yep. at 4.30. Yep. But tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. looks like it'll be uh, Cosmic Twinkle Star. Yep. And then... Yeah, we have that, um, Eternal Encore, and the Endless Story, our fighting version, Miyabi. Yep. And I'm looking here through what we've got and I am not seeing the call of the void in the list here yeah it's just ma the malevolent void yeah hmm. so I wonder why they said that call of the void had been added to the uh, to the rotation I don't know that might have just been a mistake maybe uh, but the other thing we'll note here is that starting next week here there really isn't anything new here Mm -hmm. uh, so it's basically going to be two whole weeks of the Malevolent Void, essentially. Uh, and Cash of Demonica Madness. True. Which, uh, honestly, that is the best one to do if you're looking for experience points or looking to get more class X cubes. Yep. Yep. Just Unless you... remember, don't do it on super hard or else you'll fail. Pretty much, yeah. So, yeah, it doesn't look like there's going to be anything new next week. Uh, we're just settling in for, I guess, the long haul until episode six comes out. Yep. At this point, that's where we're at. All right. We also have some casino boosts uh, coming up here. Uh, in fact, uh, it's uh, going on right now. Um, so looks like today... Let's see, in a little bit, uh, at 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific Time, uh, there's going to be a Rappy Slots uh, up. So if you still haven't gotten your um, your Rappy uh, PSE Burst yet for the, uh, for the uh, mission tier, uh, you can uh, uh, use this as an, as an opportunity to uh, get that. Um, yeah, I need to go do that. Also got a uh, Masetan Shooter bonus coming up uh, later today at 2 p.m., at 5 p.m. is Black Niac, and then at 8 p.m. is Little Roulette. And then it's spread out uh, for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Saturday. Okay. And then the 13th, it will be 
the same kind of boost. So it seems like they do these kind of boost every other week. It seems so, like uh, it, yeah. You can also see uh, Sunday, December 27th, it's going to be the same thing there. Yep, and that that's while Episode 6 has launched at that point. But at the same time, you know, we're we're looking at basically the entire month of December laid out here. And it, 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 there really isn't any direct uh, relationship between the casino and Episode 6, so it's, mm -hmm. it's fine that they're releasing all this now. Yeah. And we're going to have a Casino Coin Pass distribution on the starting on the 16th and until the 21st you can yep. get a maximum of you get two passes per day up to a maximum of 12 and long for a total of three days and you get five passes yep all right uh we also have a uh, correction that the uh, that the staff had to make here uh related to uh, one of the campaigns that was going on so uh, if we scroll down here, in order to obtain your 15-star uh, Atlas Owls X weapon, uh, you actually need to complete uh, any recommended quest at least five times mm -hmm. uh, in order to get that. So what that means is you need to receive the gift at the end five times. Which is really easy. You can finish that in two days. Pretty much, yeah. So no reason not to mine. do it. So, yeah, I already have mine. <laughs> And we also have an important notice regarding AC scratch tickets. Now, so this was actually it took me by surprise. It hmm. kind of makes sense, uh, but let, why don't you read through this here real quick? All right. In New Genesis, there is, which is planned to go into service in 2021, the system through which the items you know as AC scratch ticket items are obtained or will be different, and you will not be able to redeem AC scratch ticket consumable items that were purchased in Global for. New Genesis items. Information about the new type of system that will be used in New Genesis will be shared at a later date on the official website. Therefore, the AC scratch ticket consumable item currently available in Global will no longer be available to purchase as of the regular maintenance on the 23rd of December. If you wish to draw an AC scratch ticket after the AC scratch ticket consumable items are no longer available, please do so by visiting the scratch ticket terminal and selecting the menu option play scratch ticket for 200 AC or play 12 scratch tickets 12 times for uh, 2200 AC, which will allow for AC to be spent directly. Please utilize these instead. Please Also, please note that pre-purchased AC scratch ticket consumable items can be used through the existing PSO2 system for AC scratch ticket co collections. So yeah, it's these like individual scratch ticket things that you can buy from the AC shop. Those will no longer be available after the maintenance on the 23rd of December. Yep, you just uh, you just have to go to the counter and use your AC directly rather than uh, spending for tickets first. Why are they doing that? I think it's to bring everything in line with New Genesis and how things work, so that way there isn't a uh, disparity between both versions and players are wondering why they can get scratch tickets in PSO2 but not for New Genesis. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Plus, I would also say in the past, Sega did have to give out some free scratch ticket um, in order to do compensation, and maybe they're trying to avoid that for New Genesis if they can help mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But yeah, we will be knowing more about New Genesis um, on the 19th, so I'm excited for that. Indeed. Which means, we'll, which means on the 19th, we will probably be delaying our date on Zarks until the 20th then, maybe? Maybe. Uh, unless or... we just do a live reaction to everything. That w that might be more likely here, given what okay. happened last time. But uh, let's let's go ahead and bring that up here. So yeah, um, on the nineteenth, um, there is going to be a new broadcast for New Genesis, uh, December nineteenth at six thirty a.m. New York time. Uh, that's going to be on YouTube, and I mean that date is kind of significant there. Mm -hmm. That is one day before the. Uh, the uh, the twentieth anniversary of Fantasy Star Online. Yep. Oh, they might be getting rid of the loot box system. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> yeah, I I doubt they would be doing that. But yeah, I'm given that we're given that it's going to be that close to the anniversary. I'm starting to wonder mm -hmm. if they're going to spring a surprise beta on us here. That would be nice. Just do an open beta that people can sign up for. Yep. 
which obviously you know that both of us are going to be doing that. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. It's uh, at th at this point we're basically just reprising what we did on the Japanese server, so mm -hmm. it's it'll be nice to uh, to catch up and uh, get some new content again. Granted, on the Japanese side there is still some new content coming out, but not too much more from here. Uh, mm -hmm. If we head over to Bumpta at this point here, uh, we can see that uh, in the most recent patch, uh, they had a they had some updates here. They implemented the Turkey Lobby, which we've had on Global for a few weeks now. Yep. Um, they have that of, until December six, which then they'll have their um, Christmas Lobby. Yep. Uh, December sixteenth, actually. Yeah, December sixteenth. That's when. Uh, they also have a new Ultimate Quest. Uh, the uh, the space-time rift, and that requires level 90, 90 to run. Uh, so main 90 and subclass 90, unless you're hero, at which point you just need 90. Or any of the other uh, scion classes. True, true. Um, they got the turkey rappy. <laughs> yes, they did. You also got some invade and austere weapon camos. Uh, austere is um, what's known as the Ostia. Uh, series over on Global. Mm -hmm. uh, for Zeke, uh, players can now make a multi-weapon ca uh, coat camo by trading individual coat camos to Zeke. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, for the treasure shop, they updated the product listing. And in terms of balance adjustments in the Divide quest, pet damage will increase against Sodom. And that's it. Yep. So Not very small patches on the JP side. Yep. The the next big one is going to be when they do their Sword Art Online collaboration, basically. Yep. And cue all the people screaming about wanting that on the global side. Yeah, we'll have to see if they do it or not. If they do that, that would be hilarious. I'm sure we would have tons and tons of Kiritos around. We already do. We are, That's we true. We already did back when <laughs> global started. Uh. Oh boy, that that yeah, that would that would be just crazy. Mm -hmm. Also, that would be nice as well, uh, Krimid, having multiple weapon camos equipped at once instead of just being relegated to just one. Yeah, that that would be a fun thing to be able to do. We'll we'll have mm -hmm. to see if they have the technology at that time. They probably will if they have movable fingers. Could be. All right. Anyway. <laughs> so one more topic for today here. Uh, Clementine received uh, another update. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look through this here. So uh, for enemies, the Savaltus and Orgdus have received stat increases to HP and defense. Lutus Jiga has received stat increases to HP and evasion. And the chance for rare enemies to spawn has increased. In the mission Sinner's Banquet, Castle of Monsters, and Beach Bum Beast, uh, they have had their level requirements and enemy levels corrected in-game. Yeah, because I believe that for A ranks, they were labeled as um, in-game as level 65 when they should have been level 60. Hmm. Uh, for items, uh, they fixed an issue where natural mat could not be used if you had a player shop open. The Rio Sabed has had its model corrected. They fixed an issue where Scroll was unable to drop from uh, Mizuraki CD and Container. What uh, and Container was unable to drop from Old Rosenom City. Hmm. The Soul Atomizer can now be crafted. Oh yay! Who crafts uh, those items? <laughs> I don't know. Um, same with the Moon Atomizer. It can now only be crafted five at a time. Yep. Who crafts Moon Atomizers? I don't know. Um, the Islucra uh, should now be able to create Long Bok and, by using uh, Kubara Wood. The Setsuko Skillet has had its action label and attack sound added. Uh, Biduki Biso should now be able to create Biduki... Maganak by using Kubara wood. The Harrison Battle Fan weapon, single and twin, should have corrected rarities from one to three star. 
typos in the description of the Love Fairy and Star Atomizer have been fixed. Gamotite now costs 100 Mesetta instead of 50 in synthesis shops. And area drops in boxes made slightly more common. That's good. Why don't you take us through the rest of this update here? Right. Photon Arts, strike, for the striking ones, the Shosen Toz, uh, Tosuzanga targets have been reduced from 3 3 to 2 2, and the da damage modifier for each combo now increases by 2% per level instead of 1%. Senten Kazanga, damage modifier for the second combo, has been increased from 50% at each level. Uh, everyone should uh, learn how to pronounce the toilet class. <laughs> Uh, wait, are you talking about uh, Etoile? Pyramid there? Like, wait, I, I just need to talk about it. Bright Star, what, 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 do you, what is the toilet class that Pyramid's talking about? It, it's well. it Etoile? Yeah. It, it is Etoile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it, it, Etoile, it's French for star. Yep. Like, even my mom knows that because she knows some French. But yeah, uh, back to the updates here. So, Sentin Kazan God damage modifier for the second combo has been increased by 50% at each level. The Buku, uh, Buku Re uh, Rensen God targets have been reduced, er, increased from 222 to uh, 233. Resin Sidon God targets for the first combo has been reduced from 3 to 2. Damage modifier for the first combo has been increased by 30% at each level. And the damage modifier for the second combo has been increased by 20% at each level and also gains 2% damage per level instead of 1. For the Technic side, Zonde has had its width increased to match Barda. Gi techniques have increased, have received increased range. Raw techniques have incre received increased range and now gain an extra target at levels 21, 30, and 31 instead of 31 and 41. Dam techniques have received increased range, and the technique damage increase based on distance for bosses have been increased from a maximum of 50% to 150%. So yeah, you, I believe when it comes to uh, using techniques against bosses, it's better to be close up to them, right? Yeah, definitely, especially with the uh, the dam series, because that's like a like a frontal conal thing. Yeah. And the big update that we had was the level cap being increased to level 60. I'm currently only level 52 because I've been busy with doing other things and haven't done much with uh, getting in more levels. But I eventually I will get up to level 60 so I can do all the later, do all the new stuff that people can do. Specifically, there are more A ranks that people can do because there were ones that were... Uh, capped off because you need to be level 55 or 60 to do. Yep. I'm still back in the 30s right now just because of work and other things at this point. Here. Yeah. Too much going on. Pretty much. Uh, an, issue where, yep, an issue where burn and poison status had lower proc chances than intended has been fixed. Box area rates have been increased and consumable boxes now drop uh, area drops much more frequently. Meseta will now drop from boxes in place of DNR giving nothing, based off your player level and type level. So if your player level and type level is higher, the more Meseta you get if, you're, if the DNR roll just gives you nothing. Uh, remodeling tickets can now be traded to other players and not cause the original owner's room to be redecorated when used. Oh, that's interesting. That's, that's a big bug there. <laughs> You can now visit your other characters' rooms and access their storage, manage room decorations, and view synthesis entries. Oh, that's good. Uh, partner, partner machines will no longer try to give you their card once reaching level 80. I'm guessing it's because that uh, partner characters uh, still don't currently work yet. That makes sense, definitely. Yeah. Although, if they're taking that, if if they're doing this. I hope they're going to give out their cards once the uh, once it does get fixed, or else uh, yeah. players that level up to eighty are going to be stuck without their partner machine as an NPC at that point. Yeah. So hopefully they fix that then. Uh, fix an issue where trying to delete a board by inserting a new one while at full capacity would delete the board that was meant to be inserted. Oh. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if you got like the board for a hard quick. You wanted to delete a board, but then it deleted the hard quick board. <laughs> oh. Oh boy. Uh, SUV weapons will no longer miss, can critically hit, and also no longer 
reduce the freeze timer on a frozen enemy. Oh, that's nice. So if an enemy's frozen from like a protrancer's trap, then SUV weapons won't take them out of the frozen status. Pretty much. Ooh, that's cool. Uh, Nano blasts have been given proper just attack functionality. All blast badges have received a decrease in damage of the normal attack and an increase in damage of the secondary attack. All right. Uh, the logic for set bonuses has been rewritten to address issues on stacking set bonuses. Uh, locking items in shared storage to no longer cause a desync. In the Casino Voloyo's slot machines, obtaining a fever while on the last roll of a fever should now reset the fever properly instead of abruptly ending. Okay. Uh, fixed an issue where redecorating from a vanilla room to an aoti room while decorations were placed down would cause the decorations to snap to a single spot has been fixed. Upon using an AOD ticket with a vanilla room, all room decorations will be placed in your PM storage. And if there's not enough storage in your PM, you will be prevented from redecorating and be sent a simple mail by the server to create inventory space in your PM. All right. So yeah, the, a lot of a lot of system bug fixes, which yeah, that's absolutely needed, and that's the kind of stuff that will come up when more people are playing. Exactly. They they can only test so much before they had to release the thing. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Clementine's doing pretty well. Uh, I did see the population start to fall off after the initial hype of the launch, but you still have the set amount of people that are still playing constantly. Yep, definitely. It's um, it's a good group. Uh, sometimes it can be a little difficult to figure out where people are at the, at the yeah, time. Yeah, and, that, and that's just the problem with Universe in general. Yeah, in, in, eventually a feature was added on the, um, I think on the Japanese side, that allowed players to see what mission areas were full of players. So I'm hoping they can eventually do that here uh, for Clementine as well. That would be nice. I think you had to go up to the fifth floor counter to do that, but I don't know <laughs> if they're actually going to be able to pull that off or not. Or maybe they can display that information in a different way. Just do like a... I don't know, do like a, like an active uh, web page that just updates every minute or so with how many players are in each area. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's, yeah, uh, that's we got a lot I of have. stuff. Go ahead. That's all I have for today then. Yep. But we got a lot of stuff coming up. Got a lot of stuff to do in PSO2 and in Clementine as well. Yep. Next week might be a little bit quiet though. We'll, we'll have to mm -hmm. see what, uh, what actually comes out next week because we might not get any site updates for uh, for PSO2. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting seeing if we can put together a show for next week. I'll, I'll put it you that way. And if not, we can uh, delay to the following week then. Potentially. Which would, which would get us, I believe, closer to when the new Genesis news comes out. That, uh, that's the 12th, right? Uh, the next one, if we're looking we're like the 19th. Yeah, that's the 19th, so mm -hmm. if we were to delay, then we'd be talking Episode 6 launch. Yeah. But I, I think, if anything, maybe it's a, maybe this is an opportunity for us to do another meme review next time. Ah, uh, yeah. That was fun. The, the one time we did it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but yeah, um, so basically with all that said, that brings us to the end of this episode. On behalf of Zance and myself, thank you for joining us today. Day has dawned. Have a great day, everyone. Johnny. <laughs>